doing fine. I am fine too. I thank God. Though we are in lockdown here in Italy and the situation is not really good. The deaths are increasing every day. Yesterday, 580 people died due to COVID. I heard in the news and it's really stressful, very sad, but we shouldn't lose hope. We should keep on praying to God and things will be better. Our life will return to normal. We will live our normal life as it was before. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for your love and support. I really appreciate much. God bless you. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. For those of you who don't know guys, I've been in Italy for three years now and I like living in Italy, I enjoy living in Italy and there are those days that you sit down and you think way back then, <laughs> the first day that I arrived in Italy, those experiences, that is why today I want to share with you my first experience that I got when I first arrived in Italy. So today's video is going to be very interesting and it is going to be like a story time kind of and you know when I say story time, <laughs> prepare your ribs, <laughs> you're going to enjoy, you're going to laugh, you're going to learn a lot of new things that you did not know about Italy and Italians. So take your tea, take your popcorn to keep you company so that you watch this video till the end. Don't skip anything at all, please. <laughs> and before I start, uh, I wanted to give you like, it's like a disclaimer. Um, I was born and raised in the village. I went to the city when I was a bit older, 18 years old plus. So my own experience, things that shocked me when I came to Italy, they might not shock someone else back at home or a Tanzanian or an African, they might be normal. But for me as a village girl, <laughs> they shocked me. And you know, yes, I lived in the city for like 10 years and above afterwards, but a villager will always be a villager. That villageness will still be in you no matter what you know because it is the life that you lived so that is all that i wanted to tell you guys they might surprise you they might not surprise you because we are, we all are born and raised in different environments so let us get into our video my number one experience that i got when i first came to italy when things started getting serious with my italian boyfriend back then he said he has a plan of inviting me to italy and that's when i told myself now it is a great moment to learn italian so that i know those basic words like how are you what's your name where are you from because those are the first words that people ask when they first see you and also i also learned i love you my love more mio ti amo <laughs> don't forget those words i learned all those and i was in a place where i said yes now if he takes me to introduce me to his friends or family i will know how i can introduce myself to people <laughs> So I came and after one week, he took me to his friend to introduce me and the first words that this friend asked me, he was like, I am Mario and you are Komiti Kiyama, <laughs> what's your name? And I was like, <laughs> I looked at my boyfriend, my boyfriend knew that I did not understand what the friend was asking me and he said my name. But so that one was like, but I learned this. How could I not understand? Guys, if you're learning language, make sure you practice. Speak so that you understand. Because if you don't speak, when the words are pronounced to you, you will not understand anything at all, just like me. So learn from this. Practice by speaking. When you're in Italy, it's Italian language that it is used. 
In my country where I come from, we speak Swahili and English. Tanzanians are not good speakers, English speakers, no. But we understand. If someone talks, we understand because we learn English in O level, A level, university level. Most of the offices, when they do interview, they interview you in English. So we know English, we can speak English. And like here in Italy, it is Italian language that it is used everywhere. Schools, hospitals, uh, offices. You need to know Italian to get employed. So Italian language is so important when you are in Italy. <laughs> so if you have a plan of coming to Italy, you need to know Italian. You need to learn Italian. I remember one time I was at the hospital and I was trying to talk to the nurse in English. And uh, the nurse was like, young lady, don't stress me with English. I don't know anything in English. The only words that I know is the pen is under the, is on the table. <laughs> the cat is under the table. That's all. <laughs> So you can see how difficult it is but uh, the younger generation is better they speak a little bit of English but the old generation the only language they know is Italian and Italian love their language so much if you want to get along with Italians if you want Italians to like you if you have if you want to have Italian friends you need to speak Italians. Italians love their country. Italians love their language. So if you speak their language, they will they will take you as you are embracing their language, their culture, and everything. So they will like you, they will love you, and they will say this girl is or this man is really trying to integrate with us. But if you speak English, you you don't try to speak Italian with them, then they think that mm, this one is not trying to integrate with us. Uh, she doesn't want to, or he doesn't want to learn our language. So Italian language uh, was a, a bit of a problem to me. I'm saying it was a bit because I had someone to help me to translate. My husband was helping me, but if you don't have anyone to help you, it's a huge problem. <laughs> so that was my first experience when I first came to Italy. Language. <laughs> my second experience is going to be food. Italian food is known in the whole world that it is very delicious. And it's true. Italian food is so delicious. <laughs> I like it. But that first time as a Tanzanian, as an African, as a village girl, the only food I knew, Italian food, were pizza and pasta. That's it. Any other Italian food, I did not know them. So I, I arrived and I asked my husband, what are we going to eat for dinner? Because I was so interested to know what are we going to eat? Because I heard white men don't eat much. White men eat strange things, so I was like, are we going to eat biscuits and go to bed? <laughs> I wanted to know. So he told me we are going to eat beef, potatoes, and vegetables. I was like, oh, this is good. All of this food, I know. So he asked me, do you like vegetables? I said, so much. So he cooked and we ate but i did not see the vegetables then afterwards he came with this container he added the vegetables green vegetables he added sweet corn he added lemon he added oil then he was like ready was like you're not going to cook it he said no we eat it like this I said what this is grass how can you eat grass raw no you must cook it he said no we can't we cannot cook it it's going to be eaten like this and it is very very delicious and healthy i said no i cannot eat grass he said you're so strange he said me strange <laughs> you're the one who is strange i will not eat grass in my country we eat salads yes because that was salad 
we eat salad but <laughs> we cook it uh, even if it is partially but we must pass it to the fire you can't just eat vegetables like that eh, raw vegetables i said no, no 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 i cannot eat it but after after some time like now i like salads a lot and i eat it so much so that one was the first strange food that i found it very 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 strange to me as a first experience the second food were invited to the party guys if you're invited to an italian party make sure you don't eat before go with an empty stomach because italians can eat <laughs> Italians can eat. Let it be a wedding party, all these uh, Easter holidays, uh, Christmas parties. They eat. We went to the party. Food started coming, guys. It could come and come and come. Not ending. Those words that people used to say that white men don't eat, I don't know why. But Italians can eat because um, they eat like when they first serve the food, they serve antipasta, which is a starter. And this starter doesn't come just one. Starter has food like, uh, it has like crackers, bread, olives, um, or prosciutto, all those food, they're starter. So you eat this. <laughs> If you are hungry and you start eating all those, then afterwards they bring primo. This primo has rice, lasagna or pasta or spaghetti. After that, they bring secondo, which is beef, fish, and uh, potatoes, salads. After that, there is dessert, there is fruit, drinks, guys you get so full so in that party i found one weird food i'm going to put the photo here so that you can see it was raw beef they served raw beef guys i was like what this is raw beef are you kidding me <laughs> are you for real <laughs> raw beef guys Oh my god but i came to know that this raw beef is eaten here in, in the region where i live it is called piedmont in italian it's piemonte they eat raw beef not cooked guys so i was so surprised i was like eh, <laughs> these people can eat raw beef i'll never eat that never even now i cannot eat that beef <laughs> But they find it very yummy, very delicious. But, but to me, to me as an African, as a Tanzanian in my country, we cook beef and eat. Yes, there are those uh, like uh, tribe that they eat raw beef, like the Maasai. But it's not it's not so common. You can't find every person eats uh, raw beef. So raw beef was so strange to me, guys it was so strange so that was it guys that was my second experience in italy at first i think i talked about this in one of my videos that i did here in my channel and it is when i did a video on my first trip to europe my first experience to travel to europe and it is weather guys the weather was a very big challenge to me that first time because I came and prepared. I didn't have any winter jacket or winter shoes. I only had sneakers, <laughs> a top and a scarf. That's it. In the plane, it was okay because we were given those small blankets to keep you warm. But when I arrived at Amsterdam, I was very unfortunate because it was snowing <laughs> freezing i felt so cold guys that day and i waited to connect my plane to italy and when i arrived at the airport 
I couldn't wait to meet my boyfriend because I was feeling very, very cold. And <laughs> when he came, I just told him, you just give me that, that jacket because he told me he's going to bring a winter jacket and winter boots. So I dressed up and I still felt cold, guys. <laughs> I, arrived, I arrived at home and the only thing I, I could say was cold. I'm feeling cold. It is so cold. <laughs> he could say that the heater is on. I told him I feel cold. I just wanted to stay in the bed. That's all. I did not want to get out of the bed. I felt so cold, guys. So <laughs> that was my another experience that I felt when I first arrived in Italy. The weather. Because where I come from, like in Kilimanjaro, the, the weather can go to 21 degrees or 18. And in Dar es Salaam, it can go to 35, 40, 30, very hot. So when I came here, it was six degrees. So you can see the difference, guys. <laughs> That's why I was complaining of the cold. <laughs> <laughs> my another experience that I got when I first came here in Italy is fashion. I grew up in Kilimanjaro, where there is Kilimanjaro Mountain. It is the tallest mountain in Africa. If you did not know, I'll put a photo here so that you can see. So I am from that region. The white men that I grew up seeing, they are tourists. The one who come to climb Mount Kilimanjaro or go for safari so they come wearing or dressed up in those outfits for safari or for climbing the mountain so I used to think that all white men just dress like that they don't care of how they dress but I was wrong because you don't expect people or these white men to dress up very elegantly and go for safari or go for climbing the mountain so when i first came here in italy um the second time was during summer during winter yes people dress up elegantly but they're in winter jackets so during summer it is when i saw fashion and style italians are so fashionable they know how to put together outfits they care so much of how they dress even before they go out <laughs> So I was so wrong. In my country, we dress well, yes, but normally, you know, here it is very, very different. People dress up very fashionable. They know how to put uh, outfits together. Yes, I'm a village girl, but I know how I can put outfits together. Uh, I love fashion from when I was young, and that's when even if I do fashion videos, you see, I style dresses very good and my husband compliments me. It's because it is something that I love. But as white men, I used to think they don't care of how they dress. I even told my husband that I did not know that uh, white men or Italians can dress up very elegantly or they have those styles, you know, because we could go to the streets the only thing I could see is people wearing very elegantly, smart. I'll put a clip here so that you can see <laughs> what I am trying to, to tell you. People are so stylish. They are so fashionable, guys. And my husband told me, I don't know why you could think that we don't care of how we dress. <laughs> because most of the designer luxury brands are Italian brands. He started mentioning them. <laughs> like I said, Italians love their country. <laughs> they love what is theirs. So he told me Prada, Gucci, Versace, Valentino, Dolce & Gabbana, <laughs> Falconeri. <laughs> All those brands are Italian brands. How could you think that we don't care of how we dress? <laughs> Our brands are known the whole world. <laughs> so I was really wowed. And yeah, that was my another experience that I got when I first came here in Italy. 
as we go on, let's take some chocolates. So these are my chocolates. <laughs> um, let's eat this one. Welcome guys. <laughs> This one is going to shock you guys, but it is not done in the whole Italy, no, some parts of Italy where I visited the first time. So I told you I came two times here in Italy. The first time was during winter and the second time was during summer. Those are two different experiences. So we went to visit my boyfriend or my husband now, <laughs> city where he is from and it is in Sicily. It, this city is called Palermo <laughs> it is an island so one time we we're going to the beach and we passed this place it is far away from the city a little bit and it has a lot of orange trees so this place is a bit close because it has a lot of orange trees Sicily grows a lot of, of oranges so I saw beautiful black women standing by the roadside it was around 10 in the morning when i saw these women i thought what came into my mind i thought they are university students maybe there is a university nearby they are waiting for a means of transport to go to the university so we went when we returned we found more women by the roadside Others were seated with their seats, their butterflies out. <laughs> a lot, a lot of women. I asked my husband, what's going on? He told me they're selling their bodies, they're prostitutes. Like what? And the sad story behind these, some of these black women that were selling their bodies. My boyfriend or my husband now told me that these women have been lied to, some of them, because they have their bosses here who go to Africa and tell them that there is a lot of job opportunities here in Europe. So you come, you get a good job, we'll pay you very well. So when these women come, they introduce them to prostitution. It's a very sad story, guys. Very sad. <sighs> They have no choice they have to do it because it's not their country and they are under someone who is supervising them to do it forcing them to do it what can we do nothing it is the world that we are in but i asked my husband where are the policemen what are they doing about it he told me ah it has been like that for years <laughs> so that one shocked me it's not that where I come from, there is no prostitution. No, there is. People do prostitution. It's illegal, just like in Italy. It's illegal to do prostitution. But in my country, where I come from, people do prostitution at night. They stand by the roadside at night in the dark, not in the morning, <laughs> just like here. So I was so shocked. It was, it was my first time seeing such a thing in a daylight. <laughs> this one is going to be so funny, guys, and it is staring and gossiping. I haven't said that all Italians stare and gossip, no, but that was my first experience that I got when I first came here. They can stare at you. They can look at you to the extent you feel like, what is wrong with me? Why are they looking at me like that? You know, and gossip. They talk <laughs> about you. And like where I come from, we like gossiping. Tanzanians, we like gossiping. I won't hide that. But we will pretend not looking at you, but gossip about you. So we'll be like talk about you but we don't look at you here we look they look at you <laughs> and gossip about you that was really really strange to me but 
I did not take it the negative way, no, in a very positive way because if people are talking about you, they are looking at you, talking about you, it means they have seen something special in you maybe, that's why they are talking about you. So that was my first experience when I first came here in Italy. So many experiences that I got when I first came here in Italy for the first time but i don't want this video to be so long it is long already i know and i hope you're watching till now i really hope <laughs> and this one is italians are so social they like socializing they are so friendly they are so warm i don't know what else i can say about italians they are really good people. I am not saying this because I'm married to an Italian. No, it is the experience that I got when I first came here. And it is still the same till now, after three years. <laughs> so when I first came here, we went to the party. So many parties in this video. Yes, Italians like partying. They like socializing. Before COVID, we used to party. We used to go to parties, guys. <laughs> So, the first time I came, we went to the party and in this party, my husband was singing because he has this hobby of singing. I've said this before. So, I was left alone, seated around strangers that I did not know and we were not speaking the same language. They are speaking Italian and I speak Swahili and English. <laughs> so, you can imagine finding yourself in the middle of strangers. But guess what? I thought I was going to get bored the whole party, but it did not happen. I enjoyed because these Italians came to me, asked me to dance, asked me questions. They were so interested to know about my culture. The little English they knew, <laughs> they used it to speak with me, to keep me company, to make sure that I am not bored at the party. I enjoyed, I was so happy. They were so friendly. And that is when I came to know that Italians are so friendly. You never get bored around Italians. They are so funny. Thank you so much for watching this video till now. I hope you learned a lot of things that you did not know about Italy and Italians. <laughs> Comment below what you think. What were your experiences when you first came here in Italy or in the country that you are in? Share with your friends, family, everyone that you think is going to enjoy this video. Also subscribe, help me grow this channel. Let's grow our family <laughs> by subscribing. Watch my other videos too that are, that are in this channel i love you so much guys so much you're always here you have a special place in my heart guys and this is the truth <laughs> let us meet in my next video ciao ciao